Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Work in Progress Wednesdays. I'm Leftovers for Dinner, and Work in Progress Wednesday is where I show you what I'm crafting or working on, and sometimes I show you what, how to make what I'm making, like today. Now, if you guys tuned in last week, you know I'm working on my kitchen, like some home repairs and home improvement, and unfortunately I still am. Um, but the cool thing is, when you do home repairs and home improvements, a lot of times there's some interesting, quirky leftovers from what you were doing, and you can always find new uses for some of those leftovers. For me, I found some vinyl top, basically vinyl top liner. It's shelf liner, and I needed to line some shelves and some drawers, but I have just a tiny bit left over in this cool wood pattern. And shelf liner, it's surprisingly durable. Um, it's plastic. And if you think about it, you put it in shelves and cabinets and constantly it's taking the abuse of like um, canned goods or just whenever you empty the dishwasher angry and you just throw knives and spoons in there. So it takes beating. It's pretty durable. And I thought, well, maybe I'll make a wallet out of it. And I did. Um, now I'm going to warn you, this is my first draft of the wallet, so don't hate yet, but you just open it up, and then there's places for like your business cards, see like that, uh, you can put some money in there and some other stuff. Uh, this was the first draft, I didn't think about it, probably should have cut a little line right here so I could put like a dollar in there, you know, your dollars and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to make one of these real quick. But also, I kept thinking about it. Um, this would make a great way to protect your nice business cards. So we could make a little business card pouch. Or a handy dandy uh, on the go camera pouch. And that I'll walk you through as well. So let me go ahead and talk about the supplies. To do this, get yourself some decent shelf liner. You can get it at Lowe's or the dollar store. I'm using dollar store stuff for the purpose of this video, but I'm actually going to get some really nice shelf liner to make my handy dandy gadget bags. Uh, basically the only difference is they're a little bit thinner or thicker at Lowe's and um, they're not accidentally cut on a bias or remnants like the stuff at the dollar store. But if you're just looking for something quirky, like a little pouch, stuff at the dollar store works great. So shelf liner, dollar store, hook and loop fasteners if you want to make a pouch. Got these at the dollar store as well. It's an eight pack. Um, business card or your ATM card for measurement purposes, a dollar or you know, if you're a baller, $20 for measurement purposes. Sharpest good pair of scissors you have. Pen for marking. I didn't really do any marking, but you may want it. Um, fat eye needle, like a yarn needle. And dental floss. So this basically works as a very tough agent for sewing and stuff. Um, waxed thread. But if you don't have a craft store nearby, waxed dental floss. And the cool thing is, these three things, dollar store. Scissors you could probably get at a dollar store too. So let's go ahead. I'm going to pause this and get started. Okay, for the sake of brevity and this video, so it's not a super long video, I'm going to show you guys how to make the camera pouch first. And then basically along the way, show you how you would make the wallet. And that's because I think I am running low on shelf paper and I do want to get the camera pouch made. Now, you're going to notice something different that I didn't show you guys in the supplies part of this video, and that's this thing. And this actually came off of this. This is one of those little protective foam pouch inserts. Sometimes they line boxes or sometimes when you order a gadget or electronics accessory, it's in here and then inside of a bubble mailer or a box and that's it. And it's actually very, very tough, durable. Um, you gotta think, you know, a lot of times your electronics gadget is in this and only a bubble mailer and then the post office or the UPS does whatever they do to packages sometimes. 
but your accessory is still safe when you receive it in the mail. So I thought this would make a really good, you know, liner or protective thing for my little on-the-go outdoor cameras. The cool thing about shelf liner is <clears throat> if you get a good roll, it's got these straight lines, you could actually use those straight lines for your measurement. Okay, so that looks about right. Now, I'm actually going to sew up the sides and try to pierce through this layer as well. As you can see, my dog is here to help us. Hi, Pepper. How you doing? <laughs> do you want to say hi to everybody? Or do you just want to lay down in whatever I'm working on? Yeah, that's what you're going to do. Okay, so Pepper is going to help us sew this together. <laughs> now, we have the camera right here as a measure of reference. All right. Make sure you have your needle threaded. Oh, and basically for the wallet, you can do the same exact thing. You're going to take the dollar bill, measure it, fold your shelf liner in half. You won't need this piece. And that's about it. This is actually a bit short. Before I cut it, it would have been perfect. And you're going to sew up the sides first. So there you go. The challenge for this that I'm about to do with you guys right now is getting through this, this third and fourth layer right here. All right, and then it would actually help if I had like a paper clip to hold this together. Just realize that. I'm gonna go find one. Okay, I couldn't find a paper clip anywhere. So the next best thing, hair brett. There we go. Pepper, uh, you are not helping at all. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> all right, so I'm just gonna use this to tack everything in place. Oh, uh, you're sleepy, Pepper. That's funny, because you've been sleeping this entire video. All right, so everything's held in place. You may want to double-check your measurements again. Okay, there we go. Dog, you are so unhelpful. Oops. <laughs> All right, so we have everything held in place. We have our, oops, yarn needle, fat eye needle with the wax thread wrapped around our dog's foot. There we go. And what we're going to do, <laughs> Pepper, is open up this side. We're going to find that right there and poke a hole through. Okay, Okay. so we are sticking through this underside layer right here, and if we open it up, looks like that. So we are poking in right here at the farthest edge inside there. Did you see that? Okay, so we're going to poke through. And basically what that does is it puts this inside here so nobody sees it. So there you go. Now, <laughs> I started to sew and decided to backtrack it a little bit. I'm going to show you guys how to do the mattress stitch. I'm never very good at the beginning of mattress stitch. It's a bl blanket stitch, mattress stitch. It's a technique used by um, crocheters and knitters. I'm never good with the first stitch, but we're going to go ahead and try. Basically, you poke through all the layers, and then you wrap the thread around. Here, I'll show you guys again. Wrap the thread around. Make sure it stays up here, and then pull through. I actually am working with one arm around the camera, and another arm around the light 
It's a little bit of a dark day today, so I'm trying to give you guys as much light as possible to see what I'm doing. Now I just pull through. Okay, and now you pretty much have, oops, let's see, one of these threads is a little loose. Basically a decorative line right there. Okay, and you just keep doing that up the side of this project. So poke through, wrap around, pull through all the way. Make sure, no matter what, you are going through all the layers of, oops, of the shelf liner and the protective stuff that we added to this. Okay? And make sure your stitch stays on top. That's the point of the mattress or blanket stitch. It's a decorative edge, kind of similar to like leather work, like from the 60s and 70s. That was cool. That little rustic edge on moccasin boots and stuff. And there we go. Just keep pulling. Don't pull too hard, otherwise you are going to bunch up your shelf liner and it's going to look kind of crappy. Okay. And if it starts to fall down, hold it in place. So punch through, wrap around. Actually, I'm going to get this camera out of the way because it's dark. Oops. <laughs> and you guys can see better. Okay. Pull through. Okay. Sometimes one thread will go faster than the other and just gently pull until you get there and then pull tight. Well, not too tight. Make sure your stitches are pretty much the same length. Like don't go too far down. Don't go too far up because you don't want it to be too far deep into the material that you can't stick your camera or your gadget in. So, oops. As you can see there, I forgot to wrap it around the needle after I poked through. So I just wrapped it through the thread. Okay. And now I'm pulling tight. Okay. Now, if you're making your wallet, which is basically the same thing, measuring it to match a dollar or a business card, um, what I recommend is cutting a piece of cardboard the same size as a dollar, or while you're sewing, always have either that really thick business card or one of your ATM cards in there so that you don't go too far. As you can see, one of these stitches is a little deep, but I'm not too worried about that. And that prevents you from making this too tight or too small. I'm pretty close to finishing up sewing and realized when I got to the corner, you guys might, you know, need this useful tip. With the blanket stitch or mattress stitch, when you hit the corner, you know, right there, to get to the other side, go through that same hole I'm not sure if you guys can see that. Go through the same hole. Wrap the thread around, but make sure it's not around the corner. Do you see that? So wrap the thread around, but make sure you push the corner behind the thread. It's kind of tricky. Oops and then hold your finger in place the entire time you're pulling the thread through. Okay. Now if you have any trouble with blanket stitch you can skip it and just do like normal sewing or you know go on YouTube and try to find some tutorials. Okay so I am on my last stitch which is really good because I'm on my last like two inches of thread and I need to finish the project. So I'm going to poke through one last time with the mattress stitch 
and right before, see that's how low I am on thread. I'm going to go through, pull through, <clears throat> go like that, and now I can make a tiny knot by going through the thread, oops, like that. I've pretty much made a little knot. Now, since this is so tight, I'm actually going to cut here and finish this off with an additional knot. Now, the cool thing about waxed thread or floss, dental floss, is I can tie this knot and it's good to go. I can actually cut right here and it'll wear into place over time or I can actually drag these threads inside. I'm just going to clip it just for the sake of this video. Okay, there we go. Okay, and that's what it looks like on the inside. So there we go. The only thing I need to do now is add the adhesive thingies. Oops. Those are off to the side. <laughs> and let's see. I'm going to go ahead and put the squishy side, okay, down. And the best way to do that is to start with the pouch top first. So I took the backing off and I've put it right there. And the best thing to do to apply these is to take the other one, instantly put it right there in place peel the back off of it and then just close it like that. Now I'm actually going to give it a little bit of space up here at the top because I know I'm going to have a camera in here but there I go. I'm going to press down really tight and there it's already stuck and it's lined up, so you don't have to worry about that. So there we go. There's my camera pouch or gadget pouch. Um, you know, if you have one of the smaller <clears throat> GPS or fitness devices, you can put it in there. If you're really in a pinch, this is a water resistant housing for like a smartphone device, maybe even a tablet. I would not say it's waterproof but it's just an added layer of protection. And now I have something to carry my outdoor camera in without the lens getting banged up too much, or, you know, I've got a wallet. So, which, you know, while I was making this video, I thought about it. <laughs> hi, Pepper. Hey, Pep, you wanna say hello again? Let's say hi. Hey. <laughs> yeah, anyways, I thought about it. All I have to do for this wallet is basically cut the top. So I'm gonna pepper, don't don't lick shelf liner. That's bad. Yeah, that's bad. Okay. Come here. <laughs> Hi. Alright. So you guys, we're gonna take this. Keep the little dog away from the sharp scissors first. So yeah. We're gonna back up. All right, I cut a little snip in the top of this wallet. I'm gonna stick one blade in and cut along the top. So there we go. And pretty much stick your money up in the top, stick all your important cards, shelf liner wallet with cute wood trim look and gadget bag. Tons of uses for either of these. I was pretty amazed. Again, this is a three to four dollar project from the dollar store. Unless you already have the stuff laying around like I did, because I am, you know, fixing up the kitchen. So I hope you liked this video. I know it was a little long. Thanks for watching. And feel free to comment with your ideas for shelf liner and other stuff. Hey Pepper, say bye. Bye. <laughs>